Hey now, welcome to Beer Belly here in lovely Koreatown, which is actually in Los Angeles, California. I'm here with uh, Chef Wes, who is the executive chef, dare I say the looks, and the uh, Chef Ree Blaine. Sorry about that, I uh, have a cold. Um, actually, he's the, uh, the brains and the beauty behind uh, Beer Belly here, and what is some of the best food in LA, and I really love how you combine it in some ways. Thank so, you. thank you for having us out. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. So, how long have you been, uh, how long has Beer Belly been here, and how long have you been with the, the group? Beer Belly has been here since May, mm -hmm. and I came aboard literally a week before we opened. So, I had, wow. I had a week to get this place uh, together. Unbelievable. The menu and then get it going. Well, you certainly hit your stride. I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> great. I, I'm excited to try the food uh, later. In fact, let's get this going. Um, how did you come to be involved with this? Uh, I was actually, uh, I'm from Philadelphia and I came out here to start uh, another business prior with some other people. And, Gang uh, warfare? What kind of business are we talking about? Arms uh, dealing? Uh, food business. Food, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, I actually met Jimmy through that. Okay, Jimmy is the owner. Right, and I wasn't really liking how things were going, so. Um, with the arms dealing? Yes, right, okay, gotcha. exactly. You know, guns, bullets. Sure, it's thing. difficult. But uh, so, uh, yeah, I talked to Jimmy, and uh, he had, I had come in here during a soft opening, and mm -hmm. he was in the kitchen rolling meatballs. Uh -huh. was, what, are you do what are you doing rolling meatballs? And he said one of his cooks didn't show up, and I, and I said, you know what, let me write you a menu. If mm -hmm. you like it, you know, I'll come work for you. Wow. So he liked it. And Just sort of serendipity. Yeah. That's amazing. It's, Did you now, in, your, in the back of your head, you have this little face like, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to wow him? Or was it just this one of those random things, just this confluence just, of we, events? We kind of knew each other, and, I, and I, had, I thought I had a really great idea for this place. And I wanted, I wanted the, the inspiration was really the, the beer. And, you know, I've done, I've done gourmet food, French food, Italian food, healthy food. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted it to be fun. Right. I wanted the food to be really fun. And, uh, you know, whether it's healthy or not. I want people to be like, wow, you know, this is a different version of food I ate when I was a child, and like, just be happy with what they're eating, no matter, you know. Yeah, and I think that's one of the neat things about food is, is there's there's a connection that you have to it because, and I think it's neat about human experience is that you take something that's so necessary, you can't get past needing food in your life, and you turn it in this thing that goes from necessity to joy, exactly. and I think. The neat part about food as you grow up is that you do associate it sort of with your childhood and memories you have. And what you've done is you've taken that, taken it to the next level, where you've sort of combined the joy of eating as an adult with that familiarity to it, too. What are some of the things you have on the menu? Um, well, uh, you'll be trying the duck fat fries uh, later. Uh, Death by duck, actually. And, uh, I saw that movie. Uh, we, we've, we've been having brunch, so you'll also try the, um, the protester, which is a ex benedict with foie gras holidays. Uh, we, all, we always have our quad deck grilled cheese, four cheeses, four, four stories. Stuff. Like four slices of bread? Oh yeah, apple with smoked bacon and, okay. and maple syrup. Wow, does that um, come with a cardiac surgeon or? If you would, it's for an extra charge. Side of fries or cardiac yeah. surgeon, it's up to you. Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite item that you make either on the menu or just personally like at home? Um, hmm. That's a good one. And tell me your favorite chocolate. My favorite what? Child. My favorite child? Yeah, I want to know your favorite child and your favorite... I know they're very difficult to choose, so I'm just going to give you everything. <laughs> well, I guess the, my, my favorite uh, that I make is probably the grilled cheese because it's like the classic. It's like the most fun. I used to love grilled cheese growing up, so... Um, and we, oh, I've also had a... Uh, we're doing New Order Mondays where yeah. we do different dishes. And I had experimental grilled cheese day where I did... Uh, a blue, uh, I call it the My Blue Heaven. Mm -hmm. I did a uh, grilled cheese with all different kinds of blue cheese in it. Um, and I did a bunch of other ones, which are great. So, yeah, grilled cheese is like the classic, you know. If I had to pick a favorite, yeah. grilled cheese. I feel like this, the cheese world, it, it, it's sort of, you know, we're obviously drinking these amazing craft beers, which is something you specialize here, too. And I feel like the cheese world is that, too. There's just so many these amazing... Oh, yeah. Craft cheeses, local farms, and things like that. That's gonna be one of the fun parts of the job is going out and trying those cheeses uh, and discovering. I am a cheese whore. I yeah, cheese. <laughs> I've I've eaten so much cheese. You want to plug a particular cheese shop? See if they'll give you some free swag. Uh, no, no, no. I do like. Uh, I will. I'll. I'll plug a uh, cheese company though. Okay. Rogue Creamery. Ro the, the the beer the, uh, as well. Yes. Uh, it's smoked. The uh, smoked hazelnut. Um, Blue no. cheese. Is that from the hazelnut brown that they... Smoky blue. They smoke oh, it over hazelnut shells. That's amazing. And that's one of the things, too. I, I came to an event here a couple weeks ago, and 
you did this amazing job with really incorporating the beer into the food. I, I think every beer that was there, you had actually created a menu and incorporating that into to it. And, and it wasn't that these were items you go, oh, well, you know, I make this, I'm just going to pour a little in. It seemed as though you really thought of what the beer was, and then how do I make something around that? It's just really neat. Actually, that's one of the things I work with Jimmy on mm -hmm. pretty closely. Um, <clears throat> the trick with working with different beers, you know, some beers are hoppy, some beers are darker, some beers have a stout flavor. So the trick with cooking with beer is you have to, you know, there's always that fine line between like the bitterness and everything like that. So you have to, you know, pick your beer carefully right. for what you're doing. So, you know, you want the beer flavor to be in there, mm -hmm. but you don't want the bitterness or, you know. Right. I've heard sometimes cooking with hops can be difficult because of that fact, yeah. sort of as you render it down, you're actually getting more of that real bitterness yeah, coming the, through. The bitter bite. But are there ways to, where actually that hoppiness or an IPA is actually good to cook with? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, depending on you know what you're what you're working with. But uh, yeah, that, that's the funnest part about working with this beer. It's like they all have great flavors. They're all different. You know, we get so many different beer companies in here, so right. it's like a never-ending like it's it's like a uh, like a playground for them. It's great. Yeah, it, you know, it is a mecca for that too. Like as a fan of like good food and beer, you just come in here like, oh, I'm home. I think we'll get B-roll of this. It's just, it's a beautiful place and you sort of walk in and it's, it's not huge. It's very comforting and immediately you're really like, okay, this is good. And then you walk up to the front and the staff here is awesome. Like, you know, yeah, except you. And, and you go up to the front and like, wow, it's, it's nice, really, really carefully picked beers and it says craft beer and then for right says crafty food and you look at those you go oh that's interesting and that too and then you actually look at the description of the menu it's it's really an all-encompassing experience where you're just hitting on every single element and, and it's neat and i think a lot of that comes from jimmy and the beer and i think just you you guys just have this yeah. real vision that carries itself you definitely through. Uh, like you said serum, serendipitous yeah it's just the whole thing just me and him coming together is yeah how long did it take you to come up with that original menu uh, well, I didn't have much time, so right. they, uh, there's or only a couple things that are still left mm -hmm. on it, but, uh, you know, I had like three days. Did you just take like Betty Crocker recipes and like, less terrible? <laughs> it, it's spices, it, you know, everything in, in L.A. gets, you know, it, it, it ticks up. It's like, oh, I'm going to use, uh, you know, a unicorn horn in this one, and everybody <laughs> yes. starts using it. Yeah. Is there that one spice now where you're like, I'm staying away from it, everybody uses this right now? No, I mean, it just depends. For me, it's really... Um, What's what's going to complement the dish the best? Right. You know, if it happens to be a popular spice, you know, I'll throw it in there. But right. It's for me. It's more about the complementing the the main dish. Excellent, so. dude. I, I I love what you're doing here. This is my spice right now. <laughs> it's beer. It doesn't really go in the food, except sometimes. It's so good. I'm spitting it out. It's delicious. Um, but it, it does. It, it complements your mind when you're making it, and then obviously yeah. it incorporates into the food. So my last question for you, you know, until we're off camera, which that question will be. Can I have some more food? Is um, all right. Do you, do you like your food better, or do you like generally eating other people's food? Oh, I mean, uh, obviously, I like you know my food, right? Um, but f eating other people's food, it's more about you know relaxing. I mean, I work so much, so sure, there's nothing like having someone else cook for you. Yeah, and it's you know but we I all love our wife, but yeah, it's yeah, nice to look I around. I love cooking for people too. So. Yeah. That's all. Okay, and let's just say hypothetically, although we all know it's going to happen, you, you kill a hobo, okay, all right. <laughs> and you're on death row because you know they're going to catch you. You're not that. You're not a master criminal. Let's just say that. So you're on death row. You got one meal left. What are you doing? You, is it something you make? Is it something uh, that somebody else makes? What's your death row meal? Man, I, I tell you, I, I've eaten so many different kinds of food. Um, Braggart. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Honestly, if I had one meal left before I, I uh, kicked the bucket, it'd have to be a big old pepperoni pizza from Gianfranco's Pizza in Philadelphia. Wow. It's my favorite pizza. One of the things I heard about you, because I did research, which is to say, ask the producers off camera before I came out here. Y you won some big competition, I'm assuming some sort of beauty pageant? Yes, the uh, top girl master of Koreatown, the uh, wow. Korean Coalition, uh, in August. It was an Iron Chef competition. Iron Chef? Kind of, you know, that style. Oh, you cooking, get like, oh, here's the food, giddy up and go. Cooking in front of the judges. Wow. You know, putting it in front of them. That's amazing. And yeah. did you have a background in that kind of cooking? No, that actually it was uh, the preliminary round that uh, I got. They took the top four. The mm -hmm. preliminary round was actually the first time I've made a Korean barbecue dish. 
Wow. So I made it. It's it's more about the you know my style is you know I love being inspired by things and theming things. So if you tell me that to make an, a Korean barbecue inspired dish, you know I'm going to do my homework and and come up with something that's my style that right <clears throat> incorporate those elements. And then uh, at the finals, I just you know I did something completely different. Everybody else I went against did the, the same thing. They did the mm -hmm. preliminary rounds and you know great judges. I couldn't believe the judges that were on the panel. Jonathan Gold. Um, Simon Munjandar, who would have messed that up from uh, nobody will know anyway. From the TV, there. <laughs> we're gonna do a car run spelling that out, and it'll still be wrong. But uh, yeah, so I, you know, I went to the competition, did it, and they called my name when they called the winner. So wow! I did you look at the envelope? <laughs> a little bit. I was like, ah. I didn't. Well, in Korean barbecue, I'm assuming you know it's a lot of it's a lot of you know pasty faced white guys probably doing it, right? No. What? I was the only one. The only one. Wow. Super, super and you pasty. won? <laughs> so that you're like on some sort of hit list, I assume? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so. you know, it's worth it. You've yeah. got a trophy to show for it. And of course, the accolades of ladies everywhere. Ooh la la. Now, this is my favorite part of the segment, unlike Young Wes's, which would be the end of the segment when he gets to leave me the hell alone. This is the food time. We get to eat it, uh, taste it, uh, devour it, and ultimately feel guilty about it when I see my ass in the mirror later. That's right. I look at my ass. I divest myself of that statement. I apologize. Wes, this looks amazing. Um, Thank you. Tell me what we will be eating here. Uh, we'll start with the, uh, the fan favorite here. This is the Death by Duck. This is uh, one of our most popular items. This is uh, basically French fries, soaked in wee oui, wee, oui. soaked in rendered duck fat, uh, tossed with smoked salt and sweet onion sugar, topped with fried duck skin cracklings, which is basically duck skin fried and you chop it up, and duck confit on top with a side of raspberry mustard. Is that it? Because I feel like I need like two, three hundred more ingredients. Man, I'm, you know what? I'm working on adding some stuff. <laughs> you call it death by duck. Literally, yes. I, I feel like there's been many people who have at least left here in an well, ambulance. I'm not going to lie. It's not, it's not healthy for you, but it's healthy for your soul. Right, exactly. Well, thank goodness because I'm going to have to use my soul pretty soon. I'll be judged by Jesus, I assume. Uh, you want to dig in or you want to talk about the next thing and then start digging in? Go to the next thing. Well, let's do this, introductions first. This is actually my uh, politically incorrect dish. This Aww. is called the protester. Oh, I thought it was going to be a racial slur. Okay, no. fine. If you want to go political, okay. okay. Uh, this is uh, a Eggs Benedict called the Protester. It has, this is another duck-themed dish. This is, uh, the key ingredient here is foie gras. It's uh, foie gras hollandaise, where I take the hollandaise, I melt it down, and I use the foie, uh, foie gras in the place of the butter in making the hollandaise oh. sauce. And then we have uh, baby bella mushrooms and uh, duck confit. And obviously your poached eggs, and then to top it off, all the uh, rendered uh, foie gras leftovers are cut up and sprinkled on top. This is amazing. Uh, you're going to need a wire angle lens by the time we finish this. Let's, uh, let's dig in. I want to talk a little bit about the ingredients and how you, how you came upon them. What's the best way to eat this? Uh, uh, hands? or you wanna... Man, hands? Hands? Well, this one you might have to cut. Okay, excellent. We got any hand sanitizer? Yes, girl, we're all buddies here. You've had cholera, right? Yo, absolutely. You will soon. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna start with the fries, man. These look amazing. So this is the duck confit on top, yes. and then we've got the raspberry mustard here. Now, how does uh, one make raspberry mustard? Just some French's and uh, some jelly, or what? If I told you, I'd have to. I'll have to. I'll, we'll go in the kitchen later. Yeah. I'll get tackled, but I'm kind of used to that. Oh my god, it's really nice. Now. Excuse me for talking while I uh, while I eat. The fries got a nice texture to them. Are you, what are you are you doing them a special way when you fry them, or are they just like straight ahead? Regular straight ahead fries. fries. We used to, we went through a lot of different types of fries to find the actual ones that work for us. So. You know, I feel like that piece gets missed a lot in yeah. restaurants. Is 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 fries or fries or fries? And I don't think they are. I mean, there's a texture to a really good fry. The way yeah. you cook it, the amount of time. I assume the heat of the oil. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Also. Um, we were doing hand cut fries for a while, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, I'm not ever going to pretend that I'm, I'm doing something natural when I'm, when I'm not. These are, these are uh, certain companies' fries, but we went through hand cut fries, mm -hmm. and the hand cut fries weren't absorbing the duck fat enough right. for, for my taste, because mm -hmm. I wanted to like, kind of punch you in the mouth. <laughs> so, uh, I've had that before. Usually yeah. my mouth causes me to so get punched in the mouth. these particular fries just soak it up. And, you know. What made you think of raspberry mustard? It's just such a cool... Well, I mean, I, I actually have a French background in, in cooking, so, mm -hmm. you know, raspberry and duck goes together like, you know, 
Is that one of those things like mint and lamb that's just sort of known? Absolutely. Yeah, French know everything. It's a, you know, except how to shave, apparently. Um, this is great. So is your, like, is it all just sort of work together, or are there many iterations that you thought, well, let's put the duck fat here, or let's try this spice, or did this sort of come out fully formed? Well, actually, yeah, when I was first making it, the, uh, the smoked salt and the sweet onion sugar, you know, I have a good relationship with the spice station in Silver Lake, mm -hmm. so I've tried a ton of their spices until I found the right combination of uh, certain smoked salt sweet on the sugar together so it all kind of comes together and you don't all need it at one time so. when you go in the spice you're like oh Wes you're excited you, should, you know have yeah, a, yeah, a co yeah. corporate account there yeah, cool. yeah. that's awesome um, and then let's dig into the uh, the uh, eggs Benedict what are we calling this the protester the protester now tell us why this is called the protester this is a great story What's, <clears throat> there's really a lot of politics going around duck believe well, it or not a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know debate about the foie gras situation um, it's about to get banned in California. Now, is that just foie gras, or does that have anything to do with duck itself? Or it's just foie gras okay. it's because of the force feeding of the ducks. Mm -hmm. But if people actually uh, you know, took the time to look at the process and see how the ducks were treated, mm -hmm. yes, they're force fed. I get it. You know, people get upset about that. But when you look at the mass production of ducks in other companies, when they're not doing foie gras, when they're just jamming them in cages. Foie gras ducks are running around freely in free pens, and they actually kind of like the uh, get force fed, but and they kill them humanely. They shock them before they before they're killed, and, sure. so and they, they compliment them. They feel no. Hey pain. Drake, come over here. You know you were looking great. Exactly. You know I feel like yeah, yes, you put on some weight. I don't want to lie to that, but you you carry it well. <laughs> I, get, I, you know, I get it. I get I get why people get upset, but you know. Well, I mean, it, it seems odd to me that there's sort of a you sort of cherry pick the pieces of sort yeah. of animal raising that you think yeah. is a big deal and stuff There's like that. There's so much more uh, things going on out there that people could be spending their time protesting. I so agree. I've actually, uh, in Philadelphia, we, uh, we used to do a uh, foie gras week. A bunch of the chefs would get together and we would sell foie gras for five dollars a plate. Holy lord! And we would get protesters out front, you know, screaming in our windows. You know, threatening us. Now I'm going to do some protester math. I'm going to guess, and I could be wrong here. Um, hmm. Super comic book fat guys? Wearing masks. Really? Yeah. I figured I'd be wrong. I thought you were just going to say hot chicks with the, uh, you know. Screaming in windows with bullhorns, wearing masks, and telling us they know our I feel like you don't need the bullhorn if you're going to scream. You just, you know, I feel like yeah, you're, they, you're a soft-spoken gentleman. Like, I feel like you could use a bullhorn. They like to be loud. That's their, uh, that's their thing. Do you do that thing where you're like... When, they, uh, when you're I inside, have, I have given them the uh, the, the proverbial finger. One sign. Oh man, this is so. this is fantastic. I, I you so rarely get foie gras because you know I make literally ten thousand dollars a year, and uh, that's what I tell the tax man at least. Um, it's actually more close to fourteen, and and I don't get a ton of foie gras. This is so beautiful, and I, I think when people hear like duck liver pate, which I believe is you know what foie gras is, and then it doesn't sound good. And then you taste it, oh my yeah. god, it's just, like you said, it replaces the butter. Absolutely. And it just, it's just, the texture is beautiful. And what I like too is, huge fan of poached eggs, and I'm a moron, we've, we've known this over the last little bit of talking, it, it seems like poaching an egg is so damn difficult, is it, or, or is it that I am just it's definitely, It's definitely a thing that, I mean, you get to a point where, you know, mm. it's easy, but when you're first doing it, you know, it's definitely something that you have to, have to do a bunch of times to get it perfect every time. Awesome. You want to dig in? Yes, Come on. Sure. Yeah. Please. Don't stand on ceremony here. This is phenomenal. I'm a huge mushroom Let's fan. The duck, please do. This is awesome. Thank you so much for having us in, letting us taste this. Um, I hope you have a doggy bag. If not, I will just be pulling my shirt up like this and carrying it out. Definitely have some doggy bags. Do you? Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. You are a talent. You're a champion. Thank you very and, much. Uh, Thank you for, for coming in. Absolutely. I'll be back. Thanks, brother. Take care. You too.